Hey, what's happening? Paul Ingram here, Kali Center. Welcome back to my Drill A Day Kali Training Series free here on the YouTube channel. We are continuing with our week seven drills. Today is day four, and all week we've been working on the staff, the spear, the seventh area of Kali. So make sure you have your training staff with you or training spear with you. Now here's the deal. This one I know is tall, okay? We're gonna be working some spear stuff today. And in Kali, there's two spear fighting forms. There is the long spear, like this, that would actually be a little bit taller than this, but this is fine. And then there's also the short spear, which is about plexus height, you know, up to chin level height, something like that. So I wanna focus on some of the long spear stuff. Now here's the cool thing about Kali, though, is that whether you have a long spear, a short spear, a staff that's about temple height, head height, it doesn't really matter you can work the same movement. You can work this drill with any size staff, any size spear. You can even actually do it all with a single stick, single bolo as well. But I'm just gonna work with my long spear because I like working with my long spear. It's what I wanted to do today. All right, so go ahead and find anything that could be a staff, a spear for training today. It could be an old broomstick. It could be an old hockey stick, anything. It doesn't matter, just grab it. And let's go ahead and work today's drill. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying week seven on area seven of Kali, the staff and the spear. And let's go ahead and get to the training. Today's drill, we're focusing on some spear fighting movements. And uh, so these are some of the basics. So we're gonna be working on some of the basic thrusts, some of the basic vertical or center line cuts, and some of the basic countering moves on the spear. This is an eight count form. So let's go ahead and run through it and then I'll do a little bit of a technique breakdown and then we can get round one in together. And then after that, after the video, you can go ahead and finish out your 10 other rounds. Make sure you got at least 10 rounds of our training in. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the drill. So from here, the drill, we're gonna thrust, take it down, take it back up and thrust. We're gonna protect low, protect high, circle it out, boom, and cut into the thrust. Right there. All right, let's take a look at that from another angle. Let's do a little breakdown right here. From here, we're coming in with the thrust. Bam! Pretty simple, straightforward. This is a nice straight centerline thrust. Now we're going to cut it down. So you got to make sure that the blade on your spear is vertical here. If your blade is flat, this isn't gonna work out too well. You gotta make sure that that blade is vertical. So we're gonna take it down on the cut, and then we're gonna cut it back up, and then I'm gonna thrust it again. Okay, that's the first four movements, very simple. From here, we're gonna go into one of the first counters, and we're gonna protect the knee. So, by to bring the tip of the spear low, we do this by raising the left hand to the top of the head pop right there and if you had to you can get your lead leg out of the way if you needed to work that in there it's a good idea to train that footwork now we're going to protect our head so to get the tip of the spear up we bring our left hand pop down to our hip so we're not moving we're not protecting this with the lead hand we're using the rear hand because it's a lot faster and you can get a lot more power transferred up to the end of the spear than you can trying to move this thing around. Okay, this is unstable on the upper third of the spear. This is far more stable and it's a lot faster. So from there, once we protect the head, now we're gonna make a small circle right here. Now if you have to, you can train a larger circle just to get the motion of it. Sometimes you need a large circle, but then other times we're gonna make a small circle. What this one is doing is that if we were spear to spear, just to say, and I'm on the inside position, I do a small circle to get myself to the outside position. If I'm working the outside of the circle. If I am on the outside position and I wanna work on the inside of the circle, then I would circle it the other way, okay? So that's just kinda how that works. So from there, bop, little circle. Then we're going to cut into the thrust. So you gotta know where that blade edge is on your spear. You gotta know where that is, okay? So this is the drill right here, nice and slow. We're gonna thrust it out. 
Make sure that blade is vertical. We're going to thrust it down and then cut it back up. Then we're going to thrust again. I'm sorry, we're going to cut down and cut up. From there, we're going to protect the leg, protect the head, all with the left hand there. Small circle, pop, transferring that position and then cut into the thrust. All right, that's the drill. So let's go ahead and get round one in together. We're gonna go really slow for it. Make sure that we could dial in some coordination. And then from there, you can go ahead and speed it up every single round and add in more power and intensity as you're progressing through the rest of your 10 rounds. All right, I'm going to stand kind of sideways to you. So I want you to think of like you're standing right next to me, looking over your shoulder to follow along. If I stand with my back to you right now in this video, uh, these are all center line attacks, so you won't really see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna kind of angle it a little bit. So just kind of angle yourself, just like you're standing next to me and we're training this together. All right, from here, let's go into our stance. But, all right, rep number one. Remember, each round is, a, is 10 reps of the whole drill. So rep number one, we have thrust, boom, take it down, pop, cut it back up, pop, thrust, Pop, protect the leg, boom, protect the head, pop, circle it, and cut into the thrust, boom, right there. That's number one. Rep number two, let's make sure we got all eight movements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Number three, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five. Let's take your time. Go slow. Right there. Okay, for number six, for the rest of it, I wanna make sure we're going slow, but let's focus on smoothing out the movements. Let's make them seamless together, ready? Think Tai Chi style here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there. Seven, there's one, pop, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, thrust it out, take it down, bring it back up, thrust it, protect the leg, protect the head, protect the position, cut and thrust. Let's do eight. I don't know if this was eight or if that was nine, so we're gonna just do it eight. Eight. Right into nine. Ten, just a little bit faster. Let's do two more just because it's a whole lot of fun. Ready? Eleven. Twelve. Right there, nice job. If the spear is new for you, take your time with it. Go slow, be patient with it. All right, D don't try to just blast through everything. You wanna make sure that you are being very meticulous on the technique of the spear. And you wanna make sure that you have good form, bop, everything is you know moving the way that it should. Even though the spear is very simple, it's uh, deceptively simple. And when you have another good practitioner with the spear, this is what makes it so challenging in such a, what I like to call an advanced chess game of Kali or within Kali. is because it's so simple and it takes a lot of finesse with the, with the spear. Just tiny little errors, you lose a lot of leverage. 
especially when your uh, training partner on the other side has really good skills. So you wanna make sure that you're really focusing on the technique, focusing on the form and on the mechanic side of it. So go slowly, don't worry about your speed and power and all that stuff. Remember, we don't develop speed in training, we earn speed through proper training. And as we're getting more coordinated, as the form of the techniques is being more dialed in, as you're starting to get faster, the power is going to be a natural byproduct. It's going to happen naturally in your training. All right, so don't try to force it because then you're gonna be throwing your mechanics off, especially in the spear. So train it, train it every day, train it a lot, and uh, it will come together for you. This is my favorite area of Kali to train because it's so, like I said, deceptively simple. That's what makes it really, really hard, actually. And uh, the spear, there's really not a whole lot to it, and that's what makes it very challenging. Few high percentage moves means you've gotta be better at that game, at that you know game of chess. All right, so go ahead and finish out your 10 rounds. And once you've done that, in the comments below, make sure to come back here and let me know, done, finished, complete, thumbs up emoji, any way to let me know that you've completed today's training. And that way I know you're ready for tomorrow's training to continue on to day five of week seven of our Drill A Day Collie Training Series. Make sure to check out the description box right below this video. I have a discount code to our further training programs and DVD downloads over at colliecenter.com. So make sure to take advantage of that discount if there's anything that you would like to study further in depth with us here at Collie Center and really take your training to a whole nother level. Get outside guys, make sure that you are practicing training your collie outside, let nature be your collie dojo, because you're gonna get a lot of benefit out of it. Not only on the physical aspect, you know, the actual movements and challenging the coordination with the balance of, you know, the different natural terrains, but there's a mental aspect to it as well when you're training outside, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's sunny, rainy, windy. It brings these other elements that we just cannot replicate inside of the dojo, inside of the gym. Okay, we don't get to always be uh, choosy and picky and decisive of what the weather conditions are. So it brings a different type of mentality into our training that we need to have in the art of Kali. All right, I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow for the next drill on Kali area number seven. Get out there and go get it done. <laughs>